love to talk. So they made a podcast. And that's why we're here. To listen in. And what's it called? It's called Banter Buddy. Welcome to episode 52 of Banter Buddies, the show that sometimes gets a little personal, gets a little real, gets a little storytelling into their podcast. That's what we're doing today. But we got to bring in my co host, Brian. Brian, welcome to Banter Buddies. Sliding in. I'm right here. Sliding. Hi. Thank you for the welcome. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're back at it. We have been, uh, we, we, this, this show is relaunched. Welcome to episode two of the second season of Banter We are Buddies. launched and flying, and we're learning future people out there that are going to make podcasts. Neil deals with all the SEO stuff in the background, and uh, sometimes uploading your podcast can be fickle. So if you've got <laughs> questions, Neil's the, Neil's the person for you. Oh, yeah. Sometimes troubleshooting is the best way to learn a thing, you know? So... Uh, that's that's my way of uh, spinning a positive on some some technical issues. You know what I mean. Sometimes troubleshooting is the best way. Yeah, yeah. You learn about RSS uh, feeds and uh, all of that and 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 things. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully it's or off like and running. When you lose a t- lose a tire on a van that you bought with mm. Kickstarter money and you have to replace it and no one taught you and that was fun. That's right. Yeah, sometimes that's that's how you learn is because you have to because you're on the side of the road. You know what we mean. You know how it's how it's going. You know uh, what we're saying. You know what we're saying. But yeah, welcome to the show. We, hopefully you're you're finding the new season and uh, back in the flow with us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking us out. Um, we had a good time getting back into the swing of things, and uh, now it just feels like the show is back for real because we've got two two episodes going. Too rolling. It's yeah. It's not an anomaly anymore. It's happening. We're back. Yeah, absolutely. We're back. And uh, it's interesting because last episode we talked about Muppets, and as we record this today, it's uh, it's it's uh, Jim Henson's birthday. He would have been eighty eight today as we record this here on the twenty fourth of September. The so, man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, we we we, uh, we didn't look that up. We maybe could have ordered this differently, but you know what? It's always a celebration of Jim Henson in, in our houses. Can we do it? Can I do a quick edit? Uh, edit apology to the Please. listeners. Yeah, we need to do some. Uh, we would call this a follow up. I think in in the podcast. oh follow up. We need to follow up. Now on I should have probably we should have tagged it on the. I should have recorded it and tagged it on the end of last episode, right? Wait, yeah, no, but, this is good. I like it because then people we assume you're listening to the next episode. So here you are. You know how people like have their computers up and they're fact checking all the time, stuff like that. <laughs> I have everything turned off so that I can. I can like focus, focus on this podcast. And so I, we were chatting. I was confusing in my head without knowing it. Pepe and Rizzo together. Pepe's body type is like Beaker. Yeah. And Rizzo is the actual character that I love. <laughs> so. Yeah. This came up because we were talking about um, puppeteer Frank Oz um, talking about his. Uh, someone asked him on a red carpet or the D- D23 legend ceremony recently, like who his favorite Muppet was much like we ask on this podcast, and he said um, Pepe, um, the prawn, um, and uh, Brian incorrectly said uh, that it was, it was Rizzo. He just got him confused. So, yeah, we, we meant to say Pepe, the little prawn guy. <laughs> I know a lot of people are really mad. And yeah. of the 16 people that listened to the last episode, <laughs> I know three were just fueled. We got some so. corre- you heard some corrections from the fans, you're saying? Oh, just... I can't believe USPS <laughs> delivered those letters so fast. So fast. You got it right to your house. Oh, well, we we regret the error is what we need to say here. And, uh, yeah, if this was a publication, we would halt the presses and print a whole new one. But it's a podcast, so it's 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 in there. And it's um, a good theme for today because today ah. we're going to open up and we asked other people to call in and open up and share an embarrassing time in their life. And yep. so oh, I, love that. I know I'm going to get a little raw. So, yeah, absolutely. That's Neil? a great. That's a great segue. So let's uh, dive in right now to the cuckoo voicemail. And starting off, we have to we have to talk about our most embarrassing moments. It's only right. I mean, it's also the format of the show is that we, um, you know, talk about the prompt and then we get into the calls. 
But I feel like especially this week when we're asking people to open up and, uh, you know, bear their soul in um, some some embarrassing moments. We, I think it's better if we say them first, right? So um, I think that's the way to go. Um, Brian, did you want to start us off with a, with an embarrassing I kick moment? It off. I think Do you want I to think, say the moment yeah, well, first, I, I want you and to then the, and then say the lead up, or like give the lead up and then drop it like a story. Ooh, I see what you mean. Like, no, I think you should tell the story like you would. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to say what happened. Like, lead us into it. Uh, okay, you know, the way the way it went down. Okay, I will. All right in. In fifth grade, mm. I had a broken kneecap, and so, therefore, I had this giant leg boot on, <laughs> and my parents are Catholic, or they were Catholic for a little bit, and they had us go to this Wednesday CCD class at, like, the church school, and we had a substitute teacher, and um, it was the person's high school daughter, and she had us do a trust walk in class with all of us fifth graders. So I had a big old busted leg, and then I got blindfolded, and my friend Ricky was walking me, guiding me around, and there was another person that was maybe having, we're going to say back in fifth grade, this person was struggling, maybe Mm -hmm. having a hard time at home. Tough day. And that person pushed Ricky out of the way and walked me into a cement wall, and my front two teeth turned into dust. (laughs) Okay, so that's how I broke my front teeth, (sighs) but then I had them replaced, like not your root. Like, just like they kind of fill them in. And so I had had some hard time in school since fifth grade, fifth grade through seventh grade. I had transferred to a different district. I had gotten beat up, harassed pretty hardcore. So I went to a different school. I got my feet underneath me. I went, came back into my original school district and I joined and I started seventh grade and I had a pretty good year. I was in choir, I was in the school play. But, and so I was making friends, I was having a good time. And Neil, the <laughs> night before the last day of school, my brother and I were wrestling in our living room of our childhood home, and we bumped into a like a coffee table, and we had these like marble coasters, so they're like full rock. Oh. In slow mom, laying down there, came down, <laughs> landed on both of my teeth. Oh. <laughs> Just knocked out the fillings. Ugh. But there's this is like 9 p.m. at night. There's no time before the last day of school, the one day when everybody brings disposable cameras and oh. wants to take a picture. Gosh. And so I had no front teeth. And so I just was like, <laughs> if I can audibly like do it, I was like, hey, guys, yeah, great to see you. I like kept my lip over my teeth oh, the yeah, whole you're try- day. You're trying to hide it. So <sighs> my most embarrassing moment is the last day of seventh grade having no front teeth, barely confident in myself, barely making friends. And I was uh, I was pretty embarrassed when people were like, why are you talking like that, Brian? And I was like, my teeth got knocked out. <laughs> oh, no. I felt, For the I second felt, time, too. Like, that's wild. But <laughs> They've been knocked out, like, yeah, five times since. But, yeah, that was the second time. Oh, and uh, that... That was a that was a day filled with embarrassment, but I got through it. I got my teeth fixed the next week, and eighth grade was rocking, and I've had a good time ever since. But that's my that's embarrassing tough. moment. How did how did it do on the scale? Oh, Pretty good. That's yeah. That's that's really hard. That, I mean, and both of those were like their own moments, right? But they kind yes. of like combine also to be a bigger embarrassing moment. Like you could have just said one of those. But somehow, sure. Yeah, the first yeah. one was more like shock, but the second one was like something happened, and then you had to like go through the day with it. Like, I have pooped my pants on a walk before. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm pushing the walk. kid. You got a baby, and you're leaving at like five thirty a.m. to get just get out the door so your mm-hmm. spouse can sleep, and you yeah. chug coffee a little too fast. Oh yeah, I get it. Okay? <laughs> it happens. But, but I didn't have to be around peers in seventh grade. You uh, know, so. Listen, I, I do feel bad in some ways laughing at your most embarrassing moment, but I've I heard, think it's a good I've laugh. heard the story so laugh. many times and I know that you're you're beyond it. You know what I mean? So uh <laughs> if you're listening, you know, thinking that we're we're cruel, but no, it's it's all good. And that's what this is about, right? A lot of the stuff is, is in the past and we can laugh at it now. Uh, those yeah. are those are I think hallmarks of like embarrassing moments in the past. They're they're really raw when they happen, but hopefully they are like uh, like stories, just like fun you know dinner party stories you can tell or podcast stories you can tell. I guess time uh, heals. later on. That's right, <laughs> time heals. And, and but your teeth unfortunately don't, Brian. You've you've uh, you've popped those bad boys out or chipped them. 
uh, you know, every few years since then, it seems like. So that's that's it's it, that's a harsh reminder of this uh, embarrassing moment, I would imagine, too. The last three I've popped them out at shows. They've been microphone related. <laughs> like that that microphone I whip around a lot, and sometimes it just cracks those teeth out. If you're gonna pop the teeth out, might as well have it be something that you can then post a uh, post and promote and laugh at on social media, right? Yeah, thank goodness that we don't like do the fifty foot mic cables anymore that you uh, like tape up with electrical tape. You know, like. I know a lot of singers do that, but I think the Taking Back Sunday lead singer does it the most. Yeah, flip it, whip it. Whipping it around just yeah. cracks you in the head or something. So, Neil, your turn. You get to go. You wow. get to share. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I had a hard time with this, Brian. I don't want to like brag, but I feel like I've, I've, go- I've gone through my life pretty like unembarrassed. Maybe I was I- about to say, I don't. I'm surprised you picked this topic because I don't think you have a share point. Yeah, I don't have too many. I've been pretty lucky. Um, I haven't gotten like injured in too many ways. I was trying to think of like uh, a lot of our callers, I think, talked about like school stuff. I mean, you kind of did too, you know, lunchroom, um, maybe like a school play, you know, in front of your peers when you're younger. I feel like those are the most, those are the times when they're the most ripe for embarrassment. You know, when you get older, you get more secure in yourself. You're an adult. You're not around like like a lot of people maybe quite as much. So um, I really had to think back. But I want to, uh, this it's is. not fair, Neil, how little embarrassing stuff you had. Like I had a laundry, I had a, I said laundry list twice. <laughs> I've had a huge list like. I got pants in Boy Scouts, and Ooh. it really affect me. You know what I mean? And like Neil, I want to like share my trauma. I want to give you some of my trauma. I know. I should. I should take some of that off your shoulders, like a good friend. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> what if you could like hand it to people, like parcels or something like yeah. that? Like, here's some strawberry shortcake. Here you go. You eat this now. Yeah, it can be a little transaction. Um, my the embarrassing moment I came up with um, is is an interesting one because it, it took place. Uh, just like I think in the same year we started this band um, so because it involves being on stage but I was not as comfortable as I currently am right um, so that's important context is this is essentially 2008 um, this is something that happened uh, I might have talked about this on the podcast before but in the spring of 2008 I was asked to go on tour with a band called the spill canvas uh, who are from um, South Dakota and and do merch for them as they were direct support for yellow card all across the whole country. It was super fun. I met a lot of friends, and it was like I was a music industry student and really wanted to work in touring. You know, at this time, again, we were in a rock band. We, I think we had played our first show as Cuckoo, but we weren't, it was like the first battle of the bands. And so it was really early. So we're kind of in between the two bands we were in. So I really wanted to be in the music industry. I love Spill Canvas. I love, um, you know, pop punk and, and, and those kind of bands. And it was such a cool opportunity to like go on a full tour. And, but the only uh, thing was I had to leave, leave college. Uh, thankfully all my professors were mostly cool with it and like, let me do homework from, from the road or make it up later. Ooh, later. I want to hear about which professors weren't. Cool with it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They were also just like, yeah, all right. And it was like my, literally my last semester of school so it was pretty wild um anyway uh, uh i was merching for the, the direct support band so and it was my first time doing such a thing so i was thankful to uh meet who uh, someone that we are both friends with now someone that i'm happy to call a mentor someone that taught me a lot about touring and merch and just what it's all about a gentleman um, named jason aka j val uh he is he's a he's a he's a he's a merch lifer he's He's just a few years older than us, but he is he does all He's the king. He's, he's the, the merch king. king. Yeah, he's gone out with so many massive bands and does like arena merch tours now and stuff like that. And um, runs Coachella Stagecoach and all that stuff. Yeah, he does all the big festivals and so it was really cool to learn from him, but there was also um a little bit of hazing going on. Friendly hazing. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? He was uh I was a young whippersnapper who was uh, you know, trying trying to learn things. He was the he was the veteran who was trying to show me the ropes and um uh, for merch, uh, a lot of times what you do is you count in all of the all all of the sizes, all of the items that you bring into the venue, and then you count out all those venue uh, all those items at the end of the night. That way, you don't have to like tally every little thing you make. You simply know what came in and then what came out, and then boom, you know uh, what your numbers are. It's very important to get this right though, because even if you're one shirt off, well, then that's you don't have the numbers right, and the money's off, and you have different you know money, uh, and it doesn't work out. So. 
a, a few times I had the n- accounts wrong, uh, and it's important to note that J Val and I kind of just ended up working together. Essentially, like spill canvas and yellow card just became one kind of merch thing, essentially. And uh, I was getting the merch numbers wrong every now and then, and uh, he was sort of teasing me, saying like, "Hey, listen, if you get this wrong one more time, there's going to be consequences." <laughs> and of course, this did happen. And um, what he forced me to do was uh, go on stage. Um, during a uh, yellow card set uh, and um, sing uh, I'm a little teapot uh, in my underwear. Um, I remember so, this. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I had to go out there and I, I think I, w- yeah, I had my underwear and then I had um, like a tank top from uh, one of the other support bands, Treaty of Paris, on. Um, so I was looking ridiculous. And again, it was like, real small tank top. It real was small, tight. real white, real tight. And, and again, these days I would take this in stride. This is almost just sounds like a bit we would do like on, on our own show. Um, I wouldn't think so much about it. But at the time, I was a drummer. I was used to being in the back. I was not a front person. I don't. I still can't sing. So I, I had the mic. I had to sing. They played like a little MIDI track of "I'm a Little Teapot," and um, you know, I got through it. But it was wild, and it was. I'd never done anything like that before. It was a House of Blues in San Diego, and um, the, you know, so there was fifteen hundred people there just watching me, and they don't know who I was. So I was immersion really, therapy. Now. Yeah, yeah, really. So I was real embarrassed about that, and I had to sing "Teapot" in front of all those people and it was way before we got into this and so it was not something i was used to so that that was pretty rough but also all in good fun um i might have had a beverage or two ahead of time to get psyched up for it and, uh, <laughs> and it is it is good to note to to fans that like i was in show choir for four years i was then the lead singer of the band that neil and i were in in college and doing you know, open mic stuff and variety show stuff, and you were always the drummer. Yeah. And you then, senior year of college, emerged from behind the drum kit. Yeah. You started doing some like atmosphere songs. You started yeah, we doing had a variety some other show front at school stuff where you could like do and one you song. You were like, yeah, it's it's time. That's right. So I want to be out here. Maybe Teapot helped me a little bit, you know. Teapot. Be, be, get into the coup that we are now. Now, Brian, uh, before we get to our, our callers, I have one band embarrassing thing. Do you have any other ones? Um, any other embarrassing moments me, or any like Let me band? hear your band embarrassment. My band embarrassing thing is actually, this is more embarrassing than Teapot because it was like very unprofessional of us. Uh, it was within our first five years or whatever. Uh, we played a New Year's Eve show with our friend Mark Malman. And we um, basically, Mark made the whole show like one big thing where all the guests would come in. It was kind of all on a track. Like it was all um, uh, essentially, he, he wanted us to come out and, and play a couple of our songs, like two of our songs. And so it wasn't like, oh, our iPod was plugged in separately or whatever. It was like he had his entire show on a track and then also ours was baked in. And so we had a cue to go up on stage and do our song, and then his band would leave, and then they would come back. And we were down in the green room, and again, we were real young. We were really just getting started out, and there was a bunch of other cool local bands on, and we were just like chatting it up, being nice downstairs, and we totally missed our cue. Like We weren't like listening and knowing when it was our turn to get on, and, and Mark and his band come downstairs, and they're very angry. It's like, you got to go, and it's not just, again, it's not just, oh, it's a little quiet up there. Uh, there's no one on stage. It's Your track is running right now as if you're on stage, but you're not. You're down here. So thankfully, it was like right next to it, so we could race up there, but... And we like hustled through and, and 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 barely got through a song, but that was super embarrassing. And like I don't know if you know us, like we're pretty professional about stuff, even though like we're weird and funny and and and, and silly and stuff, and try and play it loose. Like we're, we we you know we, we're serious about being silly. Yeah, like we still want to be professional, and like we don't ever want to like mess up a show, especially when we're supporting. It's not our, even our show. Like that's like the worst thing you can do is like mess up as a support band. So that was one thing I remembered to bring to the table today. Is like I remember one, that because Mark, every like over the year I see him, he goes, hey, guys, just want to apologize for screaming at you. He was pretty mad, but he also, he, I mean, he maybe went a little overboard, but like we really did mess up. Like he wasn't, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> we met, yeah, we messed up his vibe. Maybe could have helped us if there was like a stage manager helper, yes. but also this goes to show that we learned that we get a little chatty, especially me. And so, like, we got to just, yep. like, really watch the clock. That's right. And so it's so funny that we just got finished emceeing Frank Turner's music festival where we told the stage manager, like, I remember telling Sam, the stage manager, like, hey, 
you don't have to worry about us. We're That's gonna right. be on time for every single thing and on our mark. And we did. Like yeah. we were up there ahead of time. I think it's probably because of Mark Malman. True. Yeah. Sometimes he made like, us he made us better. He told us so many great things at the beginning of our career. Yeah. Like a lot of things. Sometimes you gotta mess up to, to learn. I forgot find about your way that. Through. I totally forgot about that. But we were man. I was rolling in guilt for like weeks after that. Oh, for like years, I didn't ever want to like bring it up with anybody or you because it was just so like embarrassing and so like, oh man, that sucked. Like again, it'd be different if like we kind of did stuff accidentally like that all the time, but it was like oh, such a one-off, such a strange solo mess it was up. It's uncharacteristic. Yeah. So it was like, oh man, we can't tell anybody about this. But yeah, that was like- <laughs> Now- That was like reveal. 13 years ago or 12, that was like a dozen years ago. So- <laughs> Ah, good times. We're trying to be better. That was like guys. 2010. Yeah, that was a minute ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that those are our embarrassing moments, and uh, we have uh, six beautiful callers here who uh, most mostly are the are the are the as we say the legends, the folks who usually call in, and uh, they have some embarrassing things of their own. So uh, let's settle in here, and uh, and again, withhold judgment, you guys. These are these are these are our friends trying to. Trying to talk about their embarrassing uh, moments for the entertainment of y'all. So here's our first caller. Hey, Brian and Neil. It's Kristen from Wrangell, Alaska, calling in to tell you about my most embarrassing moment. Um, when I finished high school, I went with a group of my girlfriends to Myrtle Beach for senior week. And <laughs> we decided for one of our excursions to go parasailing. And so we went out on the charter boat. And we went up in group sets of two. Um, to parasail and I became super nauseated because I'm like super susceptible to motion sickness and so anyway by the time we reached the top on our parasailing trip up um, my friend Courtney and I, or my friend Courtney went with me anyway by the time I got to the top I couldn't hold it in anymore and I started vomiting all over the place <laughs> Um, super embarrassing because people on the boat were watching and yeah, not a moment I want to relive. So thanks for making me tell everybody. Bye. <laughs> oh no. So thanks. <laughs> so thanks for making me tell everybody. Yeah. I like that. Wait, uh, Kristen. This is an opportunity. I'm sorry that happened to you as somebody who gets motion sick. It's not fun. It's not just the puke. It's like it messes. You can't be a real person like all day. It stinks. That's wild. A parasail, if you guys don't know, is like, um, it's like, uh, what do you say, skiing behind a boat, you know? Um, what do you call it? Yeah, that? it's like it's a, not jet it's a, skiing. You're in a, a parachute like you would skydive in, but yeah. you're attached to the back of a sp- yeah, so you're, boat, maybe yeah. a charter boat? Yes, yeah, so you're way up high <laughs> with like a big sail behind you, right? So you're like parachuting, okay, so but you're attached to the boat. She was up there with another person. Oh, man. Like, is that what she says at the yeah, top? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a partner. She was up there just straight puking down into the just water and everybody's watching. Oh, no. That's interesting Senior to me, year. though, because, like, uh, and again, I'm not I'm not trying to say that it's, it's like, um, you know, bad or whatever, but, like, I feel like motion sickness usually happens when you're in a car or in a plane um, or even just on the boat. But I would think once you get up in the sail, especially with the, the air blowing in, right, air is usually a good thing, get the breeze feeling, like, being uh, motion sick while you're fully outside, um, that that must be wild too because it feels like you'd be you'd be safe up there especially when you're a thing but yeah i'm sure uh it was rocking <laughs> when i've been tubing like oh. and you're in the boat sometimes you're like looking backwards right and mm-hmm. then i think i've seen parasail kind of like wind surfers like like if the if the wind doesn't catch this right it might like toggle you up and down before you get to your big thing i think that could do it yeah Absolutely. So, yeah, I wonder how many calls we'll have today. I mean, you, Brent, Brian, you mentioned, uh, you know, you know, pooping your pants or whatever. I wonder how many like sort of messy situations we'll have, you know, w- within these calls because I feel like that's that's a big part of embarrassment too. Is like, oh, this like thing got all over me, or I spilled milk or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, the, the Neil, mo- I thought you were going to maybe talk about your embarrassing moment, like two years ago when we we're playing a sold out show in Chicago, like our biggest show in Chicago. We're at the last song. And you like did the splits, and your pants didn't just like ripple. <laughs> it's like your pants disintegrated, uh, like they fell off your body. Yeah. And you finished the point. last song in your underwear in front of everybody. Yeah. Again, that's a good point of like the show, the progression of like, oh yeah, that didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I haven't thought about that since. Like it was no big deal because like 
nowadays doing stuff on stage it's just like oh no that was good like that was like a fun memory that like thing that happened <laughs> rather than like oh no i was embarrassed but yeah that's what oh, no. 15 years of acting a fool on stage will do for you so <laughs> Kristen, <laughs> i'm so happy that you shared this because yes. now i feel like we're closer because we're both motion sick people Absolutely. is there a name for hmm. there should be like a cool club for motion sick people be like you know like Somebody's like, hey, you want to go on the stroller coaster and be like, no, nah, no spin spins for me or something. Yeah, I'm in the da da da. Like, I'm a. Yeah, I'm, I'm a. Yeah. I'm a loopy loop. <laughs> we'll, we'll think about that one and get back to you guys. Let's see uh, who our next caller is. Who we have? Hey, Cuckoo. It's BJ calling from Dallas. I called earlier. I got disconnected. So I'll try to see if I can make the story a little bit quicker this time. So I'm in second grade. And on this particular day, my stomach was not feeling too well. Um, I figured that maybe it's because I didn't eat breakfast. I was just experiencing some hunger pains. So as long as I eat some lunch, I'd be good to go. So lunchtime rolls along. We get to the cafeteria. I sit at the table. I take one bite of my sandwich that I brought that day, and I feel it coming right back up. I couldn't stop it. I turned my head, bam, all over the cafeteria floor. Now, in the past, any time that I saw somebody throw up during lunchtime, it was the same sequence of events. Somebody would throw up. You get the little chat from all people saying, oh, so-and-so threw up, blah, 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 blah. And then the faculty and staff that was on duty during lunch would have that person sit at the bad people table on the other side of the cafeteria. And so um, at my school, we had to where each class had staggered lunches. So as one class was leaving, another class would come in. So the new class that was coming in, not knowing what took place, would see all the people sitting at the bad people table thinking, oh, well, no wonder what this person did and get the little chatter from them, too. So when I felt it coming back up, I tried to hold it in so that it wouldn't happen to me, but unfortunately my body had other plans, and it happened again. Bleh! All over the cafeteria floor. BJ's threw up, blah, 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 blah. And then the faculty person had me sit at the bad people's table, and I had my head down for the rest of the time at the ca- uh, during this time during lunch. So what made it most embarrassing was not just the, the, the throwing up all over the floor. That didn't bother me. It was all the unwanted attention from, uh, from my classmates and all the other people sitting at lunch. But wait, there's more to the story, as if this wasn't bad enough. Apparently, my teacher did not get the memo on what happened. So after lunch, we go back to class. And we're sitting at our classroom rug doing our next activity, and I'm sitting next to my teacher's desk, hovering over the trash can, waiting for round two to come up. She comes up to me, we have a conversation, don't remember exactly how it took place, but she was basically like, if you don't feel good, go home. So I go to the front office, they contact my parents, let them know what's going on so they can come pick me up. So as I'm waiting for my parents to come get me, I feel round two coming up. Yeah, all over the front office floor. And so now anybody coming into the school had to wait until janitor came and sprinkled the sawdust stuff on there and let it soak up and all that stuff and we clean up. So yeah, that day I got a double whammy. So <laughs> that was a pretty embarrassing day. Talk to you later, guys. Oh, no. More I vomit, wonder, Brian. I'm thinking about <laughs> second grade BJ, Aww. and I just want to give him a hug. Yeah. BJ, I'm so sorry that like it's after the first times. time they didn't just say, like, hey, here's a bucket. Sit in the nurse's office. They made yeah. you like roll oh no that's tough Fail. that's tough i like i like the bad kids table <laughs> i call it the bad kids table even though you didn't misbehave you just are sick <laughs> so you go to the bad kids table <laughs> i know first of all uh, also to have a bad kids table <laughs> oh. oh this is what they called it oh man I, I also shout to bj for um doing the the vomit like um sound effect you know blah like i like yeah, he, I ke- he kept that consistent that- and did it three times <laughs> And also, I want BJ, BJ, I want you to rethink this story in your head, okay? These were trained professionals to work around kids, yes. and they missed at multiple angles, <laughs> and they deserve that puke on their floor. Yeah. You should have been taken care of. You should have been, uh, you needed a hug and a bucket and a little water. And so you know what? They got their, they got what they deserve, some puke. Absolutely. Wow. Um, puke I... makes me puke if I see it, but I love talking about puke. Yeah, yeah. Just don't go near it. Don't smell it. Don't don't look yeah. at it. I I'm um, like a ki- I was the kid. I probably was the kid that like 
oh, somebody puked. And then I looked at the puke and then I puked. So you got puke on puke. <laughs> yeah, it was a tr- triggering situation. I put the we show together like every week. We should have put like an ASMR sensory warning at the beginning of this podcast. Yeah, be careful. We don't know what, what you might step in during this show. Every week I put the show together and um, pick the order of the calls. I kind of just skim them because I don't want to fully know i want to react you know live essentially yeah like i get to hear him first time yeah yeah yeah. so i don't really know but I, so i didn't know but we had back-to-back vomit here <laughs> i knew Kristen's was that i was like oh that's a good start i'll put that first uh but i didn't know so i again i think there might be a lot this might be the theme of, <laughs> of this episode is... travis better talk about vomit or i'm <laughs> out i'm quitting the pod i know well bj thanks for sharing and uh yeah i hope I hope that was uh, as bad as it got as far as sick. BJ, you're getting school. a big, you're going to get the hug you deserved in second grade from me the next time we see each other. <laughs> next time we're in Dallas. All right, let's see uh, Let's see how this person threw up. What's this caller? Hey, this is Zach calling from Henderson, Nevada. It was good to hear a few other people from the Las Vegas Valley that uh, called into the podcast last week. Maybe we need to do a Southern Nevada takeover one of these weeks. Um, hey, so for my most embarrassing moment, it, this, you know, it's kind of tough because my whole approach towards life is a painstaking avoidance of embarrassing moments. Uh, but I do have a pretty good one. Um, I'm, I'm tall like you guys are, so growing up, everybody was telling me I should play basketball. I didn't like basketball. I didn't want to play basketball. But when I was in eighth grade, I finally tried out for basketball. And I went to a small school. I made the team. There were 12 guys on the team, and I was definitely number 12 on the depth chart. Um, So, you know, honestly, the whole season was a bit of an embarrassment, but the one I really remember, I think it was the second or third game of the season. Fortunately, none of my family was at this game, Um, but I didn't get a whole lot of playing time, and I don't even remember what the score was, but they put me in for like the last minute of the game, and so the ball got passed to me, and I thought, wow, how come nobody's defending the basket? So I dribbled and went for it, and all I heard was a bunch of people yelling, Zach, no! So clearly I wasn't even paying attention to the game and didn't understand how basketball worked because I shot the ball at the other team's basket. Now, I don't know if I made it or not, and honestly, it didn't even seem like that big of a deal to me. But then, like, four years later, when I was in high school, I overheard one of my teammates telling somebody else that I had done this when I was in eighth grade. So... Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, basketball wasn't my sport. I don't lose sleep over this, but there probably are people who are on my team that year who have told their own kids about this embarrassing moment that I had. So I'm going to say that is my most embarrassing moment. Oh, okay. Zach, <laughs> Zach, I'm here for you. Oh, I felt like I knew where that one was going. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know where it was going until like the la- like nobody was guarding the goal. Yeah. I was like, no. Oh, man, I feel like I've seen this happen before, but I, I feel like what's different about this, uh, sorry to say, Zach, is like eighth grade's pretty old for that to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like I've seen, I've seen this in that. You're dunking on our vulnerable hey, caller? Uh, sorry. Hey, we're bringing it out here. But yeah, I feel like, yeah, maybe some elementary school kids have seen that happen. But yeah, hey, I get it, Zach, you know? So you, you were you were sort of in a situation where it seems like like you literally said you didn't really want to play it wasn't really an interest of yours so uh, <laughs> I understand that you were you weren't uh, dialed in all the way but uh, that's certainly pulled, a funny one we pulled Zach up this summer to sing Popsicle with us in our Vegas show and I think Zach's taller than both of us yeah absolutely so <laughs> uh, you know he's a he is a tall pretty fit attractive dude you know what i mean like if i think i believe zach told me he's a high school principal don't want to like throw it out there but like yeah if he was my high school principal you know i'd be like whoa what's up buddy but you're, you're saying this to say that um things have turned around for zach and it's it, all, all's well that ends well <laughs> all's well ends well wow and to be like i think we should i think zach should tell the story to all his students Oops. I think Zach should tell all the story, the story to his students, and then for the opening, like Spirit Week, thing should recreate this viral moment. <laughs> what do you think? That is really good, just to sort of like level with them. Like, listen, you guys don't always have to be perfect. Here's a here's a reenactment of what happened to me. Yeah, when listen I was your to the story age. before your parents can tell you about me. I'm ready, right? <laughs> Zach, uh, I can't wait for the Southern. Can we say, do you say Nevada or you say Nevada? Hmm, I say Nevada. I say Nevada. But I don't know if it's correct. Southern Nevada. Let's take it over. Zach, thanks for calling. Hey, in. my name is Erin, and I am from Sydney, Australia. 
And my most embarrassing moment was with my four-and-a-half-year-old, and we were in an elevator with an older man, and my four-and-a-half-year-old turns to him and says, Wow, man, why are you so old? And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. And she jumped in front of him, and then she said, hey, man, I'm talking to you. Why are you so old? You should be in the ground. And I'm mortified by this point, but we still have three more levels to go up. And so I said, oh, my gosh, I'm so I'm so sorry. And finally, the doors opened, and then two more older people came in, and then she said, whoa, why are you so old? And by that point, I just grabbed her and ran out of there because holy moly, (laughs) I was not happy that day. (laughs) All right, can't wait to see you in Sydney, guys. Talk soon. Bye. Oh, bye. Absolutely. Aaron. Bye. It's our first Australian caller, Brian, potentially. This is our, I believe, this is our first, Aaron, thank you for being our first Australian Banter Buddies caller participant. Wow, international podcast here, Brian. Going, Let's just going start all this over off by saying I cannot wait to meet this kid because <laughs> this kid's four. Be awesome. At four, they were saying this stuff. Four and a half year old. Wow. First of all, the whole thing of like you should be in the ground. Yeah. You should get your four year old to say that, and I feel like some DJ is going to sample that. Like, you should be in the ground. Yeah, it's call, like a little kid calling someone old, like I feel like that's maybe kind of common or like some thing that's, that is said, but like you should be in the ground is like a next level. Like how do they even know what that means? Like where did they get that? Like that's where this story really, really pushes forward into a second level of embarrassment. So that is that's next level. As a parent, though, I, I understand the embarrassment because yeah. like. You talk through with your kids. How everybody's different. Everybody has this, but like we were sitting next to somebody who, and kids are just inquisitive. They're just inquisitive. Yes. They don't mean shade by it. You know what I mean? But like, yes. my youngest son Dawson, like, was with somebody who only had one leg, and he was just like, the all the questions came up very loud and very pointed, <laughs> and I'm just, like, I'm trying to like diffuse it a little bit because I don't yeah. want that, but I could see that that person was like, totally used to it. So then sure. I just said like. Why don't, you, why don't you ask him? <laughs> you know, so wow. it was cool. But what if this old person would have, I want to know what this old person said after they left out of the elevator. Right. Like who was the first person they interacted with and like retold this story to or whatever. But yeah, that is the nice thing. It's kind of, that's what makes this a little less embarrassing is it's like people give kids a break. Like people know, oh, it's what the kid says. It's all good. Not that you shouldn't be embarrassed by it, but I feel like the person, you know, probably wasn't actually that offended, you know, when a little kid but says something like that. When you're a parent in that moment, no yes. much, no matter how much oh, yeah. you know that like kids just do like, yes, like the first thought they come in, it comes out loud, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You still, I still, I know all this about child development, all these things, and I still am just red, beat red. (laughs) Yeah, it's still visceral when it happens, even if your brain knows better. It still, like, gives you the flop sweat or whatever. (laughs) Aaron, we cannot wait to meet you in Sydney, Australia. And we're pumped. And uh, congrats to your footy team for being so kick butt this season. I hope you all take it, take the cake. Let's uh, let's go to our next caller from one uh, non-U.S. country to another. Hey, guys. This is Suzanne calling from Toronto. Um, I just listened to the uh, Muppets episode, and Brian, you mentioned Statler and Waldorf, who are my favorite two, and whose names actually I just learned as a result of you asking this question. Um, but you mentioned that you'd want them to heckle you um, so that you'd know that you were killing it at your live shows. So I'm going to volunteer. Um, if you need someone to heckle you at a show so that you know that you're doing a great job, you know where I am. Give me a call. I am happy to be that person, and I'm happy to do you that favor. Um, but anyway, on to this week's question, um, most embarrassing moment. Um, so I don't know if this is the most embarrassing moment of my life, but it's definitely one of my childhood. So uh, here we go. Picture the scene. It is Toronto. It's the 90s. I'm like a 10-year-old super shy kid, but I'm a 10-year-old super shy kid who's in the Girl Guides. And um, one of the benefits of being part of my um, particular uh, Girl Guides group is that you could participate in the um, Toronto Santa Claus Parade. So Santa Claus Parade is like 120 years old. There's like thousands of people that come out to watch this thing. Um, so it's the 90s. There's no streaming. There's no YouTube. Like It's not that easy to get on TV. Um, but, you know, if you're in the parade, there's a chance that you might be on TV. So it's kind of a big deal. 
um, the day comes around, I get dropped off at this like school or this warehouse where you, you get dressed and, you know, already this is nerve wracking because I'm shy. Um, but there's people there, they help you get dressed and do your makeup, you know, things are going all right. Um, I, the parade starts, I'm walking, I'm waving, I'm walking, I'm waving, um, you know, everything's going well. Um, but then partway through the parade, yes, my costume. So my costume, I was dressed as Jill, Jill from Jack and Jill, you know, the classic Christmas character. Um, but you know, as I'm walking, I, I had this kind of skirt or like underskirt slip thing and it kind of it fell to the ground. Um, there are people lined up on either side of the road, you know, three to four deep. And they just started to laugh. And right then and there, in that moment, my 10-year-old heart just broke. And someone came over, like a parade marshal. They helped me tie this thing back on. The parade continues. I don't recall it falling again. But I was just shattered. And, you know, at the end of the parade, I don't remember telling my parents about it, probably because it's too raw and painful to talk about. But, um, but yeah, there you go. That's my embarrassing moment. Um, I have a parade-based question for the two of you. If you could create a float to be in, you know, whatever parade you enjoy watching, what float would that be? Um, that is it for me. I hope you both well. Uh, take care. Bye. Oh, yeah, Suzanne. Bye. Uh, wow, Brian, you talked about getting pantsed in uh, Boy Scouts. Suzanne got pantsed just by the wind or just by an unseen force during a parade though that's that's oof that's rough that's everyone's looking at you purposefully you know that's like your no, pants falling down yeah. on stage no. like everyone's looking at you and your pants are down dang that's a tough okay, one okay neil let's catch up on a couple things one girl guides is what girl mm. scouts are in canada and Such i think a cool name. uk and i know this because i read the biography of juliet gordon lowe who created the Girl Scouts was friends cool. with the guy who uh, started the Boy Scouts and wanted to like we need something else and so she's a legend. She's from Savannah, Georgia, and that's uh, awesome. Girl Guides. There you go. That's what that's what they're talking. It about. It makes sense. Like Scout and Guide. That's like a that's just like a synonym. So I, it makes a lot of sense. But they have the alliteration going. You know, Girl Guides. So GG. That's a good one. That's cool. Yeah. Shout out to Canada I wonder if for that. Uh, Canada Girl Guides get down with the whole cookie thing, like in the states. Oh yeah, yeah. Girl Girl Guide cookies doesn't really necessarily roll off the tongue quite as well girl scout cookies girl guide cookies man no it's fine um, it just depends on how much you've heard it yeah yeah exactly yeah we'll have to we'll have to learn we'll have to oh, hit up suzanne and ask Marshall. that's tough being I'm in the parade for you. suzanne i'm feeling i'm feeling for your your 10 year old soul it's the holidays you're supposed to be you know feeling good you're supposed to be around family and friends and and, and celebrating but instead embarrassing moment strike you i love know. parades and it'd be hard if like you have a negative reaction with something that you love then you like couldn't i wonder if oh, Suzanne yeah could, like can you still like watch parades or right you, or yeah. are you nervous for every single participant that something um, a wardrobe malfunction might occur i oh, i think parades is probably the place where wardrobe malfunctions happen the most because they're just like hey, you're moving you have to wa- you have to move really far yep. there's no like side place to go if something happens right well, like, and like she's saying like you're probably not wearing your own clothes or, like tent or something like that you're just like exposed on yeah. the street and you're probably not wearing your own clothes like you probably just like someone just like threw this costume at you like half hour ago right so you're you're not you're you're wearing different stuff oh man this is tough well uh we were we were lucky enough to hang out with suzanne uh this week kicking it in toronto um and uh yeah it's always always a treat so um, you can heckle us any day yeah that's and, that's uh, okay we I often we ask people to, to boo uh, us but we don't really ask uh, um ask for heckling too much so maybe we need to get into that yeah and i think this parade question i want to answer it but i'm thinking we hijack it for a, like a, a future i know we have this season figured out but we need to put it what would your parade float be? Because I have got like 10 ideas immediately. The first thing, yeah, that's a good idea. We won't go too deep. My first thing that came to mind is to have a float that has like automated candy, um, like like cannons or something. Like instead of people like tossing candy in the crowd, like this float has, you know, little ways to fire candy out. Sounds a little dangerous. We'll, we'll get around that with legal, um, but we'll have to figure that part out. But that, that's my first thing that struck my mind was like, what if the float itself was tossing the candy into the crowd or something? like that yeah just said hydraulic you know yeah (laughs) i've always wanted to like i think that just having like the pickup truck and people throwing it out and you're like dressed up in costume is fine but i like 
thinking about like a parade kind of like Animal House where it's like the truck, but you like paper mache make something huge Ooh. over it, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the truck is like the base. Or something. But I like the idea when like like you would make something that is purposely like looks bad, but you sell it as like this is the best thing ever. And you like your personality that you're personing perso- like personifying is like um you think this is the best thing ever but it's actually like looks like hot garbage and so like they're like do they know <laughs> that's what i want yeah that's that's very much our live aesthetic in a lot of ways you guys you know what i mean like the glitter monster might uh might be a, a sort of version of this right <laughs> do they know <laughs> do they know, do they know? <laughs> just throw this thing together Suzanne, uh, i'm happy you called in absolutely all right we got one more caller who could it possibly be Hey guys, Travis from Riverside here. I have one that comes to mind. It wasn't, it didn't actually come to fruition, but just the, the possibility of it was mortifying. Of course it happened in middle school. Uh, me and my friend, we were both crushing on the same girl in seventh grade, and she was really cool because back then, before pre-cell phone, you were the cool kid if you had your own phone line in your room. And you were extra cool if you even had a voicemail, an answering machine in your room. She had both. She was super cool. And we used to call her and bug her all the time. And we got into internal strife. We became jealous of one another. And one time, towards the beginning of seventh grade, I called her phone and left a voicemail as if I was him and sang on the voicemail like, hey, this is Jason. I just want to say I really like you. And then I sang this song really terribly on purpose. And then the next day at school, she was on student council and did the morning announcements. She said, hey, guess what? I know that was you, and I'm going to play that some point during the year uh, over the uh, school intercom for everyone to hear, just so you know. And then she was had the same role in eighth grade. So every single morning for two years through middle school, I was terrified every time the announcements came on because I thought she was going to play that voicemail. She never did, but just the potential of it made my morning horrible for two years straight the other minor one the uh the consolation prize embarrassing moment was eighth grade of course it all happens in middle school we had to do a physical fitness test it's where you do like push-ups and sit-ups and jumping jacks and all that stuff and we had to see how many um sit-ups we could do in a minute and these two cool punk rock kids uh each one had to hold my foot while i was doing sit-ups and i wanted to be a cool punk rock kid too i had my uh poser operation ivy shirt that i wore all the time and they're holding my feet, and as I do a sit-up, I rip a straight scud right in their face. Just the loudest four-second fart you've ever heard in your life. It blew their eyebrows off. That's what it was like in my mind. And uh, that was pretty bad. Sidebar, are you guys, I know you're SNL heads, are you enjoying the Lonely Island and Seth Meyers podcast as much as I am? I am geeking out on this thing. They just did a deep dive on my favorite digital short of all time I ran so far, so... Want to know if you guys uh, were checking that out? All right, talk to you guys later. The one and only Neil. Ah, classic. Okay, right first there. off, next time we see Travis when we're in Cali, Travis, I need to know the first and last name of the seventh grade girl. <laughs> Full name. It's gonna be like Kelly Marie Carlson or something. You know, wow. just I'm picturing. This is a basically what happened here is Travis was pulling a prank on his friend and then it got reversed onto him and and suddenly he was the one being pranked and really really tortured uh by this girl cuz yeah the, the dread I mean that's what they talk about like with like horror movies or whatever like yeah you can like do a jump scare and pop out and scare somebody that's one thing but I forget if it was like Alfred Hitchcock or whatever like you show the bomb under the table and then you just like pan away from it and then like the audience the whole time is like thinking about when's the bomb going to go off like that's the real terror that's the real horror is like not knowing um so that's what happened to you Travis is you were then dreading it every single day for a long time that's brutal that is diabolical from even from middle school that is this that is, is a this this person was a seventh i'm gonna get some flack for saying this but this person was a seventh and eighth grade terrorist yes yes she, they knew she was, in, she was inflicting terror on right. our dear dear boy travis from riverside yeah <laughs> how how dare she how could she oh my goodness that is wild and can you uh, imagine sitting there every single time pit in your stomach I get a pit in my stomach if I like responded to an email maybe without fully asking you and I'm worried you're going to bring it up and like wag your finger at me. Like I get like a pit in my stomach. Can you imagine if this happened in seventh grade? Two full years, Neil? 
I'm sure there was. Uh, I'm imagining that there was like some little chime that plays like before the morning announcements go on, like do do do, and then like you, Travis is like Pavlov's dog now. Whenever he hears that chime, like the fear like hits him, and, and if we were to play that chime right now, he would just start sweating or whatever, or like what start if we? Twitching. we sh- I'm gonna talk to his wife on the side. <laughs> I'm gonna find out where he went to school. I'm gonna find out. Like what the alarm system was in Southern yeah, California exactly. seventh grade schools, and we're gonna find that chime, and we should play it at the next show just to torture him. Get ready, to, just just like your your friend Travis. Uh, you know, we're, we're you never you're never gonna know when it's coming. Which good you're never show. gonna be safe. You're never, never safe wherever safe. you are. Neil, wow. I I don't know if you prank phone called. I did prank phone call at a friend's house one time. Um. I did like a prank. We were like hanging out, and then I didn't know about Star Six Nine. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Star Six Nine called back. That's where you can dial that, and then it calls back the last call that happened. So, and my yeah. friend's mom picked up the phone, and it was the person who we pranked, mom, and we got in trouble. And I have uh, never done it ever again. <laughs> oh, you learned your lesson. Learned your prank call lesson. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and then farting. We, we only had one more. You know, we started off strong with two barfs, and uh, you know, and then. Um, and then, you know, we waited a few more calls until we got back to some, some bodily stuff. So yeah, the fart. Yeah. You know, that, that is embarrassing, but at the same time, I feel like when you're doing sit-ups, like that's just fart town right there. Like it's, it's almost like expected. So, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people had that same experience of farting during sit-ups. Farting. Is it, we didn't get, we, okay. First of all, we are loving this podcast, the Lonely Island Seth Meyers. Oh yeah. But, um. We're only we're doing like a really cute thing, you guys. We're only listening to it together when we're on like a drive to another city. So I think what was the last one we just listened to? Um, I can't remember, but we're pretty far back. Like they they are rolling. We've probably listened like ten of them. We haven't Um, gotten to Hot Rod yet, so that's how far away be. That's how far we are. Yeah, yeah. So so we are. I think that we're like halfway through the season or whatever because they go season by season. But yeah, it's a really great podcast. Uh, I was thinking about it for a recommendation as well, Travis. So we're on the same page, uh, just like it says on the tin. Seth Meyers and Lonely Island. Um, they just chat. In each uh, episode is a is like one sketch, and then they talk about the other things that they wrote on that episode. But yeah, it's great for any SNL fan because there's lots of how the sausage gets made, like kind of conversation. And and we uh, know anytime SNL does fart stuff, they do like, it's usually Steve Higgins like doing like live farts on the side. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't do an audio track. Like it's yeah. really a person doing it. It's a live, there's a live person in the mic. <laughs> so yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, we recommend that show. Um, and it's fun because you get to go back and watch, like we always just like watch the sketches together that they're going to talk about and then boom, get right into the episode. So <laughs> It's fun, and those guys are funny, and Lonely Island is a big inspiration for why we started the band, actually, you know? So, comedy jams. Good times. Comedy. Appreciate everybody calling in. Um, if you didn't hear your call, check it out at the end of the episode. It'll, it'll be there. We'll have a few other embarrassing moments uh, there for you. Um, but we're going to do another podcast in two weeks, and um, uh, on that episode, we want to know what are you an expert in? And uh, also tell us something about it, like uh, help us learn about what you're an expert in. And um, an expert, that can mean a lot of different things. It doesn't mean it's like your job or you know more than anybody about this, but what's something that you know a lot about? And it doesn't have to be um, like a sports team or uh, a skill or something. It could be it could be something that uh, you're, you're an expert in this sort of emotional uh, connection with somebody or you're really good at uh, explaining something or, or, or something like that. So, you know, to, uh, cast a wide net here. We want to hear all sorts of different uh, expertise situations uh, for, for our next show. Can I sidebar just Please. for people listening? And if you get to this and you need like, oh, I'm not an expert in something. Yeah. Neil and I aren't really experts in stuff. We just have yeah. stuff that we like and we know about. That's what we're kind of talking about. Like, yeah. what's the one passion you have in your life where you could like sprinkle a little knowledge around to somebody else? Yeah, like amongst people you know, you probably know the most about this. But obviously in the world, there's more folks that that might know that. That's a good way to put it. Um, Our number is 612-440-5724. You call that, you leave a voicemail, and then you'll be on the show. It's as easy as that. So what are you an expert in? And tell us something about it. Sweet. All right, time to get to our next segment. It's called Recommendations. All right, we have things we want you to know about because we like them, and uh, we think you might like them too. I'm going to get us started off. 
um, I want to recommend an album that came out um, uh, just a few months ago, and it's an album uh, from uh, composer uh, Michael Giacchino. Uh, you know him from uh, lots of different films over the last like 20 years or so. Um, he did the theme song for The Incredibles and for Jurassic Park Lost World. Um, he's worked on Lost and Ratatouille. I know him. I, I think I uh, first learned about him actually because he did the, the the current music for Space Mountain um, out here in Disneyland. So he's a really cool guy. Actually, I saw him um, on some panels at this year's D twenty three conference. Um, so that was really rad. But he put out an album this year um, uh, called um, Exotic Themes for the Silver Screen. And it essentially is a lot of his most well-known themes, but done in like this really laid back, almost like tiki style. Um, he calls it retro lounge style from the Exotica era of the 1950s. So it's a uh, it's really great, all instrumental, but just like laid back, almost like beach jams, you know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of really relaxing tunes for you, but some themes that I think you'll rec- you'll recognize. Um, so I've been putting this on as some, as some great background music, and uh, Michael Giacchino is he's a big Disney Parks fan, so I like that about him, and he's done a lot of really cool. Uh, Would different you say theme, that this songs. person is like the next Hans Zimmer kind of vibes? Like yeah. plays his own stuff, but also it's like soundtracks, all these like epic. Yeah, I think so. Cause yeah, he does. He definitely does a lot of epic films and you know sci-fi stuff and Marvel stuff and things like that. So um, he's fantastic. And if you're not just into you know listening to scores and stuff, this is like a nice way to like get the big music, uh, you know, melodies and stuff that you know. But you know, done in a in a more relaxing kind of summertime vibe. Maybe maybe this is a little inappropriate for uh, fall. But you know what? You can chill at any point. Doesn't matter what it looks like outside. Dig it, even if you're not chilling by the beach. Um, exotic themes for the silver screen by Michael Giacchino. Well, as usual, we'll link to this stuff in the show notes. So you can click on it and go listen. Man, great name for an album. Absolutely. Really, really, really good. Uh, Brian, what you got for us this week? What you recommend? Okay. I, if you have heard of this show before, I'm very late to the game. But I would That's like right. to spread the word if people have not heard about it, maybe for a rewatch or for your own thing. It is a cartoon on disney plus called gravity falls now normally my family does not even come close especially neil you and i to scary stuff at all we don't like Mm. it we don't like that's right we're trying to get a little better at it but like haunted stuff has never been our jam but one of my friends we were hanging out and they were like this person's really into sci-fi and they're like hey i know this show that my kids like it's called gravity falls it's kind of like the x-files for kids and I was like, okay, we'll give it a shot. And hook, line, and sinker. It's only two seasons. I think it came out in like 2012 on Disney XD. That must have been like cable. Was that yeah. cable? Yep, yeah. totally. And it follows um, these two 12-year-olds for the summer named um, Dipper and Mabel. And they go <laughs> to their grunkle's house. That's their great uncle. <laughs> and uh, he lives in this mysterious place called Gravity Falls. And there's some antics and things that happen. Like the first season is pretty much like movie monster of the day. Like you could just watch one off. But then the second season really like ties together a story. If you listened, if you listened to earlier pods and you checked out Lumberjanes, it has a Lumberjanes vibe to it, but it's a different beast on its own. But the two seasons of Gravity Falls and Disney Plus are a recommendation for any age. Actually, no. Let's say over five. <laughs> over, over five. One. Over five. Check so. out Gravity Falls. I got to watch it. I got to check it out. I want to see this. Uh, you, just... If you, yeah, Neil, you're going you're gonna to devour this. I think just for, the, <laughs> just for the goofs, just for the, just Mabel alone is so funny. Like, it's worth it. So, two good, I love two it. good names. I've watched it on my own because my kids will like watch ahead, ahead of me and I like missed a couple and I'll just like <laughs> you download it up. and I watch it on the plane by myself, so. Uh, that's awesome. Gravity Falls on Disney Plus. Check it out. Uh, you probably have Disney Plus. I bet. I bet you do. If you're listening to this, if you don't, um, maybe we'll share your pa- we'll we'll share a password. Yeah, hit us up. We'll we'll let you in. Um, all right, that's recommendations. And uh, next, it's time to play a game. All right, today's game is uh, is inspired by our time. Uh, this just this last week in Canada. We'll talk about that in our next segment. New with Koo. But uh, we talked about a lot of Canadian bands and uh, 
today on the show. Uh, I've got some name that tune, a uh, little, little short clips of some Canadian bands, Brian, and I'm hoping that you can uh, name name the band, name the song if you can. Everyone, obviously, we always want you to play along at home. We've got some little clips. Um, I have this set up in what I think will be easiest to hardest. So don't get this first one wrong. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Nothing's wrong, just as long as you know that. Ooh, a little crunchy. We'll do it one more time here for the people at home. Nothing's wrong, just as long as you know that. All right, Brian, name that tune. Well, it's Nickelback. Yes. He was about to say the name of the song, but I cut it off. <laughs> Just as long as you have been in. I know it's like a pre-chorus, right? Yeah, that was it. Yep, they were just about to launch into it with this name of the song. is the first word they say in the chorus. Someday I'll be a... You said it. Someday, right there. Someday by Nickelback. That's hey! The name, that's the name of one of their hits. Someday, right there. Yeah, I mean, you, you get it if you just get one part of it right, but obviously... Both name of the song and artist are good. All right, nice work. Number one, I hope everybody got that one at home. Let's go a little bit tougher. Let's even get this one. All right, not not too many vocals in there. I think that first one might be the only one with vocals. Nope, I got it. All right, Brian, name that tune. Okay, it's Bare Naked Ladies. Yep. I'm trying to think of a song. I bend down the way you yep. do, do, do. We talked about this one because it is. It, this was their actual charting hit, their number one hit in uh, in Canada. It was not one week. It did not hit Ooh. number one in Canada, but this song Ooh. did. Wait, hold uh, on. I got to like, sing through the whole. I got to sing through the chorus so I can get to it. Oh, it's all been done. Yeah, it's all been done. That's right. It's all been done. Oh, amazing harmonies. We yeah. should like. Tr- we should try to learn. Also, you said you couldn't sing at the beginning, and you have learned a lot about singing. And you can oh, getting sing better, now. getting better, getting better. Um, but yeah, it's all been done by Bare Naked Ladies, Toronto's, Ontario's, uh, one of their many bands. All right, next one here. Things are getting a little tougher now, Brian. You're gonna know this band, but I'd be surprised if we get the name of the song. Arcade Fire, baby. Oh, it's Arcade Fire. It's off of Funeral, right? It's off Neon Bible. Oh, it's off Neon Bible. Mm-hmm. Our second, second our record. Second album. Is it Neon Bible? It is. Uh, no, the name that's the name of the album. The name of the song Ooh. is No Cars Go. Oh, no I know they played that go. one on SNL, but I would have gotten that one wrong. <laughs> That's a hard one because, yeah, I got to try to do it. Sometimes you put in the words and they say the name, right? It so <laughs> No Cars Go by Arcade Fire, their wonderful second album. Uh, these are all, all these bands, by the way, are like, if you're us, if you're like 30 or 40, you'll, you'll know these bands. All right, this one's really hard. <laughs> this one's really hard, uh, but I love this song so much and I can't remember if you love it. So let's see if you know it. Here it is. No lyrics at all for you. One more time. But again, the first words he was about to say in that are the na- is the name of this song. Do you have any idea? Do you have any guess what that might be, Brian? I, the only thing I can kind of sounds like uh, there's two things. I was going to say it sounds like Elvis Costello. Uh huh. Or but he's British, and then it kind of sounds like a Kaiser Chief song, but they're Ooh, British. That's really good. So. Yes, that's really close. Yeah, it's a band called Hot Hot Heat. Oh, and, and, see, yes, I know people love that. I don't know anything about that band. Yes, and this is kind of their big MTV two hit. Of Who's them. the lead singer of Hot Hot Heat? Hot, I don't Hot know. Heat. I don't know the names of them, but I just really like this album a lot. And this was like the big single off their first uh, album called Bandages. Bandages on my legs and my arms for you. Uh, bandages. I told you it get harder as it went along, so I put in a I deeper love it. cut there at the end. You got most of them though. That was good. Hopefully, you fared pretty well. At is there home. one more? 
And that's it. Four. We got four of them right there for you, that Brian. That's great. Hot Hot Heat. Should I check out yeah. Hot Hot Heat? Yeah, I like that album a lot. It's really fun. Kind of, yeah, it's very like jangly, but super high energy and kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs is a great like comp, like kind of like that's that's the that's the kind of vibe we're go- they're going for. Same guitar yeah, totally. tones and, and high energy and, and uh, yelling and stuff like that. So Hot Hot Heat. There you go. All right, that was the game. We got one more segment, and uh, we already teased it. It's called New with Koo. All right, we were out of town. We were we took a long, a long stretch. We've these days in the last few years, we pretty much are home all week and play shows on the weekends. But uh, this week we had a little ten day excursion, didn't we, Brian? We were gone for a long time. Ten days is like the longest that we've been gone in like four years. <laughs> I know we uh, we used played... to be gone for like see ya. Like the shortest time was like a three and a half week tour. It was like we were gone for like seven weeks at a time, and now it's like two nights. Yeah, exactly. So we played in Virginia, in New Jersey, um, in in the middle of uh, September here, and then uh, we were in Toronto for. For lost evenings with our friends Frank Turner and Sleeping Souls, and so we just hung out in uh, in New York in in the meantime, um, and and we had a great time. So um, we actually got to see so many friends. We got to yeah. talk to a lot of people. I think I got my chit chat, I got my chit chat quota up like pretty high. Yeah, you're good for the year now, you know, because not only do we hang at the shows of folks and, and again with our friends and bands, but also just chilling in New York. We got to meet some people and um, see our old friend Shane Shane, um, who we started playing shows with, uh, you know, or, you know, we played some of our first Madison shows were with him and he's been a lifelong friend. Um, he writes for the Washington Post style column. Uh, so he's doing great. Uh, we saw a wonderful uh, immersive show called Life and Trust. That's also a recommendation uh, for you adults out there who are in the New York area. Check out Life and Trust. It's a beautiful beast. It's a big thing to like handle, but it was, it was, it was theater at its finest. Yeah, it's in the format of made popular by Sleep No More, uh, where you wander um, a, a multi-level, uh, all-in theme, you know, decked-out space, and there are. Uh, performers who you might follow or observe, um, and just the l- amazing lighting and, and, and sound. And um, this one took place in an old bank, and so it's kind of a money a, a story about money and stuff. And so the, the site uh, was very impressive of it. Well, it wasn't just like, oh, here's an empty warehouse, go run around in it. It was this was an old bank. Look at all these like uh, you know marble columns and uh, wild architecture and stuff like that. So really impressive show. So if you if you're into that, sounds uh, like something that would uh, you'd be into. Go check it out when you're in New York. Uh, we saw a comedy show at the um, uh, what was it called? Not Bell House, but uh, Union 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 Hall. That's what it was. Union Hall out there in Brooklyn. Drew Anderson and friends. That was a good time. That was so fun. We like sat on like a church pew on the side. Yeah. It was pretty tight in there, but it was yeah, fun. a little basement show, a little seventy-five person basement show. That was really good. Ate some good food, and then Lost Evenings. It's uh, the fourth time we've we've emceed Lost Evenings. I thought and, it was fifth. Uh, I was telling people five. Oh, four. okay, cool. Uh, I feel London, Boston, Anaheim, Toronto. Didn't was we do the... two London or no? Maybe so. I'm I'm misremembering, but yeah, those. We'll have uh, to go back to the lost. Evenings. Go back to the books. Yeah, it's a four day kind of residency type festival that, that Frank does every year in a different city. Um, so it's really fun, and we get to hang with friends, and sometimes play our show, and uh, but mostly just come up with fun bits to do on stage before bands come on. So, and recommendations here: if anybody likes punk bands, or whatever this band, No Bro, they brought it. Ooh, No Bro, yeah, we saw No Bro. Uh, uh, some other bands that we really like: uh, Bedouin Sound Clash. Um, I've just heard their name; they've been around for a long time. But they were like the police. They were told yeah. they they were pitched to me as like this sound like the police, and then it was it was a lovely show. Yeah, and our buddies the Shackletons um, from Minneapolis uh, were able to play as well. So we're really proud of those guys for um, doing the thing and hustling and getting outside of Minnesota and playing some shows. So shout out to them for being there as well. So good times um, traveling. Good times, ten- great oldies, cool one hundred eight. Sorry, you always, yeah. I always say good times a lot, and then Brian. Brian uh, talks about a, a you know a radio station call out from. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if they're it's still the saying that. It's the oldest station in in the Twin Cities, and it's is that uh, still their line. Do you think it, uh, you got to check it out to see? Because <laughs> I don't know why they would change it. It's so good. 
It's uh, Good Times, Great Oldies with Cool 108 Weather. <laughs> we love jingles. We love radio we love radio stingers like that. Wait, did we talk about your birthday? <laughs> it was my birthday. Yeah, it was. we didn't talk about it, but it was my birthday on the 20th. Now put in your calendar for next year, y'all. But it's super fun to have your birthday uh, when you're when you're traveling, or um, you know, it's just fun to have a birthday that's not like the rest. And that's uh, that's what's fun because especially when you get older, your birthdays kind of run together, and you're like, oh, what did I do for that one? But I'll always remember that my 39th birthday was in uh, was in Toronto. Was the and usually uh, I turn into a pumpkin about 9 p.m. But I stayed up till 2 a.m. for you, Neil. It was epic. I couldn't believe it. That's that's a birthday gift uh, entirely onto itself. Uh, so shout out to Brian for staying up and and uh, partying on my birthday. We had a great time. We had cake and uh, you know just just chilling with the friends. That's all you have to say. We it had cake. Fancy. You yeah, know, it it's a, you know, we threw it down if we had cake. You know, we cake a and, sheet uh, cake. Oh, yeah. and also Timbits, right. which are tiny donuts, which are also cake. So double cake, <laughs> double cake. I had, so, I had so much cake on your birthday. <laughs> I ate like a sleeve of Tums. That's well, the time for it. I was sleeping at night. I had so much cake. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Banter Buddies. Appreciate everybody who called in, and uh, and the, or even if you didn't call in, you're just listening. That's cool too. Um, next episode, we're talking about uh, we're talking about what you're an expert in. So please call us with uh, and let us know what you're an expert in, and tell us a little something about it. Six one two four four zero five seven two four. Uh, Neil Z made the theme song. Wampa Stampa. He always makes the the the, the album art, the podcast art. Um, so check that out. He has a good time with that. Hopefully, and <laughs> hopefully he likes it. <laughs> I know he likes we the hope. show. I hope he likes drawing the album art. Uh, he never says. He just does it. He just oh, does no. it. He's so dutiful. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode, and uh, we'll be excited for that. And uh, good times, good times doing this one. Thanks for revealing your embarrassing moments. That was that was a lot of fun. We'll see you next time, Brian. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, this is Gerard from Los Angeles. I was so happy to hear your new episode while on a run last week. Uh, so great to hear some familiar callers and new ones too. Uh, as for my most embarrassing moment, it's something I don't think I've shared with anyone until now. Uh, one day on the way home from school, I felt the call of nature. I was still kind of far from home, so I got off the freeway and pulled into a Costco. I quickly made my way to the restrooms at the front of the store. It was early afternoon and the restroom was completely empty. After taking care of business, um, I made my way out of the restroom. Once back in the store, I realized that I had done something wrong. I had been to that restroom in the past, but in my rush, I had gone into the women's restroom by mistake. <laughs> Luckily, no one saw me or I would have had some serious explaining to do. Stealing a page from Travis from Riverside, I want to ask Neil, what are the best things about L.A.? Other than the Bob Baker marionettes, of course. Finally, I want to thank you guys for sharing my class's video on your socials back in March. The kids felt like rock stars. I'm going to miss making those videos, which were always the highlight of our school year. Bye. Lauren from Alaska. I'm not sure if it was the most embarrassing, but it's the one that comes to mind. When I was in school, the only phone number I was ever handed was on April Fool's Day. So I threw it away when I got up to put my tray away. And to this day, I don't know if it was supposed to be a real thing or not.